The Van Camping Channel is brought to you by these sponsors. Folks, we are working our way through some absolutely stunning country and I'm quite honestly just trying not to kill myself looking at all the beautiful views. actually working our way back in. We left this morning to go resupply. We've been up here for a week on the uh, Snake River that divides Oregon and Idaho. Uh, we've had just an amazing time uh, back here, fishing, swimming, uh, beautiful, beautiful hiking trails into the Hell's Canyon wilderness. So it's been a really nice time and I decided I want to spend another week. Now it is a good drive to get in here but it's well worth it to me. I, like I said, it's a beautiful spot. I think it's a great location for you guys to check out. Here's one of the exact reasons why it's so hard to keep your eyes on the road as you're driving through this area. Not only is the terrain stunningly gorgeous, but there's a lot of wildlife in here. And I've luckily come across probably one of the more rare inhabitants of this area, which is bighorn sheep. There is quite a few in Hell's Canyon, but I would say when it comes to wildlife, you're going to see more elk and deer and uh, wildlife like that. But there is bighorn sheep, and I have come across before uh, mountain goats up here. But like I said, we've got a couple, a few bighorn sheep right up here. We've got uh, two that are bedded down and just kind of chilling. And then there's a couple others that are just feeding up on the top of the hillside. Um, I st I'll get a little closer to them as I pass by, but I didn't want to take the chance of disturbing them and having them move off. So I'm going ahead and just getting, trying to get some pictures right now and uh, just enjoying observing him for a little bit because like I said, this is a real nice treat to be able to see some bighorn sheep. Man, I tell you why that tastes good after a 
long day of traveling. We left this camp, the van's parked right back to where it was last week, and uh, we left the camp this morning around eight o'clock, and it took us three hours just to drive the dirt part of the trip back to lo the little town of Joseph where we resupplied. But yeah, it's nice to be back. Uh, I think tonight, uh, I'm just going to have a little sip of whiskey and relax, maybe straighten a couple little things in the van, but I'm just gonna take it easy tonight. We'll worry about camp set up tomorrow. We've got a full week, We've got all the time. We don't need to worry about being in a hurry. Well, I've really been enjoying these quiet mornings out here on the river. For a few hours each day, you don't get too much traffic. In fact, pretty much none until about 11 or so. And then you might start getting some boat traffic up the river. I think it just takes them that long to get from Charleston to where I'm at. But like I said, for a few hours each morning, it's, it's quiet and it's peaceful. Sometimes I fish spend a little time down just fishing along the river or sometimes I just sit and have some coffee and watch water flow by. Content on the Van Camping Channel is brought to you in part by the sales of my very own Primal Outdoors coffee. If you're looking for a great tasting coffee to take on your next outdoor adventure, go to my website www.van-camping.com and pick up a bag of Primal Outdoors coffee. Primal Outdoors coffee is available in light, medium, and dark roast, and for my followers out there with Keurigs, Primal Outdoors Coffee is now available in K-Caps. Fuel your next outdoor adventure with some Primal Outdoors Coffee today.
All right, guys. Well, I think we got camp all dialed in, at least dialed in as much as I'll do right now. I'll probably still get a few things out here and there as I need them or want to use them throughout the week. But just having the awning out is nice because, like I said, we've had a variety of different weather. And right now the sun's out and it's hot, so it's just nice shade. But we have had thunderstorms and heavy rain as well down here, so having the extra cover is just nice. We've got the fire pit somewhat set up. It's not exactly the way I would like it to be. Uh, but since that fire pit was already there, I decided to utilize it. Ideally, I would like it to be a little bit more out in front of the van, but I think it'll be fine. I, I probably only have a fire maybe one or two nights this week just because it is so warm and hot that <laughs> more heat's not necessarily welcomed, but I'm sure it will be nice at least one of these evenings for a little bit of ambiance. We can have a small fire. So anyways, guys, I think um, I'm just going to settle in for a little bit and then I think what we'll do is I'll take you guys and uh, we'll go look around a little bit and uh, share a little bit of the history and some of the other things that are going on around here. Well, we've enjoyed some pretty beautiful weather for most of the afternoon. It's been hot and sunny and quite honestly, most of the time I've spent in some swim shorts, cooling off in the river and spending a little time bass fishing. But we do have a thunderstorm rolling in right now and I'm even feeling a little bit of rain. This has been kind of the norm we've had for the past week or so in the fact that we either start off with cloudy skies in the morning and then it gets sunny in the afternoon or like today we start off with fairly sunny skies in the morning and then by the afternoon the thunderstorm starts rolling in and we get a little bit of wind and rain. Now, some of the times we've actually gotten some pretty significant rain and it's really poured, but uh, today so far I haven't seen anything like that. It's just been some rolling thunder and that's about all I've, all I've witnessed at this point. I stepped away from my camp because I wanted to share with you guys a little bit of the historical significance of this location where we're at. Now this is called Doug Bar and there's a lot to see and do here. There is a little ranch house up here with some outbuildings. We got a little airfield, we got a boat launch, but then there's this informational booth that talks about the Native American tribe, the Nez Pierce. Now the Nez Pierce did live up in the hills and river valleys here in Oregon, but they were pushed out by settlers and the US Army to be moved on to a smaller reservation in Idaho. War eventually broke out and they tried to flee into Canada, but they were caught in uh, the Bear Paw Mountains of Montana. Now the significant part about this particular location here is this is where they were forced to cross with all their people and thousands of head of horses and cattle. And it was during May of 1877. Now in May, you would be right in the middle of spring. So the river would be raging very hard. You would have spring rain, snow melt, and plus you're probably looking at the river right now and it, it looks pretty gentle, even though I can tell you the, the uh, current out there is quite strong. But right now we do have a dam in place up that would not have been at that point in time. So I'm sure it was much a different landscape than what we have now, what we're seeing now. So anyways, if you guys are interested, you know, you can read about it. If you come out here, you can read about it here on these informational signs, but I'm sure you can find information on the internet as well. So behind me and just below the ranch, what looks to be the ranch's old field, there's now an airstrip and it is marked as a U.S. Forest Service airstrip on the map. I've seen quite a few pilots come in and land. They don't seem to stay very long or hang out. They just kind of land their plane. Uh, some of them have gotten out, but most of them just turn around and then fly back out. So I don't know if they're doing some kind of training, uh, trying to log some hours. Uh, maybe if you're a pilot and you have some information on that, you can let me know. But it does seem fairly active. I've seen quite a few, probably half a dozen planes come through in the past week or so.
the sun is about ready to drop over the mountain here, but at least it did make a reappearance. The storm blew right over. We had some thunder for a little bit, but now it is clear and it's beautiful. And we're actually standing up here overlooking the airfield and we have the old ranch house behind us. Now to be 100% uh, honest with you guys, I don't really know much about this place. I've tried to do a little bit of internet research, but I can't find anything definitive that tells me too much about it. There are some signs on here saying that it is now Forest Service property, but I don't know if it started off that way, that this is uh, a Forest Service outpost that was built and they had horses here and livestock and that's why uh, we got the pens and the barns and everything like that, or if this was actually a working ranch and the Forest Service eventually took it over. If anybody has any information on it, I'd love to know, and if you could leave that down in the comments, it would be uh, much appreciated. But uh, anyways, I mean, I've been walking around and it's, like I said, with the sun out and everything, it's just been stunningly beautiful and it's uh, been a real joy to explore and just, you know, check out the place. But with that said, like I said, the sun is starting to drop. So I think I'm going to shuffle on back down to the van and settle in for the evening. Hey folks, if you're enjoying this video on the Van Camping Channel, please take a moment and hit that like button, and if you can, make a simple comment. Likes and comments really do help promote the video on YouTube. Leaving a simple thank you or I enjoyed this video comment will give the video a much better standing in the YouTube algorithm. Sharing this video on forums and social media will really help get the word out to potential new viewers as well. And lastly, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will never miss a new van camping episode. Thank you so much for your support and now let's get back into the video. Well we've got another very stunning morning. The sun is starting to come up over the peak that we have out in front of our camp. We did wake up fairly early this morning and we went out and did some fishing just right here along the bank in front of the van. It was a bit slow this morning compared to other uh, times I've been out fishing. I, I caught a couple, but they weren't very good size, so I went ahead and released them. Since the fishing wasn't that great, I decided to go ahead and retreat and uh, grab a hot cup of coffee and sit out by the bank and enjoy the last little bit of the coolness of the morning before the sun did actually come over. It is starting to warm up now pretty decently, so we're going to go ahead and get some breakfast going. So we're going to cook that up real quick. And then what I'm going to do is grab my fishing pole and my gear again, and we're going to go explore some areas a little further downstream and see if we can get into some bigger bass.
Man, I tell you, it's something very satisfying about a good hearty breakfast when you're back in the back country. Egg, sausage, hash browns, a little Tabasco, some seasoning. Super delicious. Best part about it is I got plenty of leftovers, so when I get back from fishing, if I'm hungry, I'll just reheat that and have lunch. All right, well, we've hiked down to the end of the old runway. We're in a section of the river that I have yet to fish the whole time I've been here. The water is moving much faster here, so I'm not sure that it's gonna be that great for bass, but there are a few pockets like this one behind me that uh, has some slack water in it, so who knows, maybe something's headed up inside there. We'll just have to see what we find. So while I was walking down here, I accidentally uh, let my line get all wrapped up around the tip of my pole and it got really knotted bad. So I just decided instead of spending forever unknotting it that we would just reline everything. But all I've been using down here is I got a little swivel, probably about maybe a foot and a half, two feet of leader. And then I've been using a quarter ounce uh, Panther Martin, it's the black with the yellow dots. Pretty much my go-to, I call it the proven performer because it just catches fish. Though admittedly, it's not catching fish today. Or, I mean, it has, but. Been a little slow today. Well, we weren't doing very good downriver, so I decided to go ahead and take a break for the heat of the afternoon. And now we are back on the river in a spot that I've done pretty well. In fact, the bigger fish that I have caught, I have caught in this little cove here, just along the river. And last night, in fact, I caught the biggest one that I've caught in since I've been here. All right, so I just caught this guy and uh, yeah, he's a nice one. He's probably the biggest one I've caught now to the river so far. Uh, he's going to make flay up real nice and uh, he might be tomorrow night's dinner. Alright, so this is like I said the typical size I've been catching here, but um, he's not horribly big and since I've already got fish in the freezer and in the fridge, we're just going to let this guy go. So as you guys come around the back side of this cove, you'll see that there actually is another big rock monument uh, to the crossing to the where the Native Americans crossed. I believe it was actually this cove is where they entered the water in order to get across and then come out on the far side where there's a spot on the bank where you could see that it would be half decent to exit. Whoa, this one feels good. Okay, this one here, this one here is going to be a keeper. He's, uh, we'll take him back and we'll clean him up. Oh, hold on, guy. Oh, there you go. Well, that wasn't the most graceful, but... <clears throat> All right, well, I think I'm gonna call it. We've got the one fish. It's not the biggest in the world, but it's a good size for the pan. 
sun's just about down so i think what we're going to do since we've had this is one of the cooler days that we've had so i think this is the night we're going to go and fire up a little bit of a warming fire cook up the bass i caught last night we'll put this one in the freezer and uh, just relax for the rest of the evening I thought before I started the fire I'd glass over the other side and look around the brush over there. It's been a couple days since I've seen them, but we did have a small bear over there that was hanging out and I seen him a few nights and he would be up in the trees uh, foraging around. I know down for sure there's one of those trees is a mulberry tree uh, and then the rest of them are, look similar to these which I think are like a sugarberry tree or something like that. But he would be up in them and uh, foraging around and then and then one day he was down on the rocks and foraging around the rocks it was always fun to kind of watch him and stuff and just kind of hang out and you know and sit under my awning and use the binoculars and and uh, just watch his little antics and stuff as he'd mess around in the trees but like I said I haven't seen him for a couple days but I check every night anyways All right, well, I think we've got everything pretty well settled in for our dinner tonight. We've got a warming fire, which is quite honestly, it's not really all that necessary. It's still pretty warm outside. But then we've got a smaller cooking fire that we're now letting burn down to some coals. Uh, we're just using some of the sugar wood that some people have cut already in this camp. I just trimmed it up a little bit more and uh, we'll use that to cook over. I've completely closed up the van because we do have a, like a caddisfly hatch and they're not bothersome as far as like mosquitoes are concerned but they will fly into the van and then that's just annoying so we'll do all our cooking outside so that way everything can stay closed up and hopefully we can keep the van bug free for the night but like i said we're going to cook the bass that i caught last night i'll cook that one and then i've got some rice that i'm going to use and some asparagus so it should be a pretty good dinner.
Man, I tell you, this is a pretty great way to end a wonderful day here on the river. This bass tastes amazing. I never thought bass really tasted that good, only because I hadn't had an opportunity to fish for them here until recently. And I always seen people throw them back on TV, so I thought they just didn't taste very good. But these smallmouth, at least out of this river, taste delicious. I love them. I'd eat them over trout any day. But my rice came out good. I was a little bit worried about that, considering the fact that I did cook it over the fire. I thought maybe I'd burn it, especially in that uh, stainless steel push pot that I have. But it all came out pretty good. There's a little burn on the bottom that I'll have to clean up, but all in all, not bad. But yeah, sitting here with a good meal and crackle of the fire and the gentle flow of the river, calm night. Just pretty special. Pretty special. The content created on the Van Camping channel is made possible by the support of the members of the Van Camping website, www.van-camping.com. By becoming a member, you'll be able to enjoy the video content I create free of all advertisements and have the ability to download the videos for offline viewing in 4K. Your membership also gives you access to forums where we talk about everything from vehicle builds, camp recipes, photography, and video creation. Certain membership levels also gain access to my personal GPS database, full of amazing locations to camp around Oregon. Consider becoming a member today, and not only will you become a part of an amazing community, but you will play a major role in creating new awesome adventures that will be shared on the Van Camping Channel. We took off early this morning. I wanted to get out and explore a little bit of the wilderness area. We're actually inside the Hell's Canyon wilderness. I wanted to explore a little bit more before we left and I wanted to get out here while it was still fairly cool in the morning. Though it's been a pretty nice day. It's a little bit overcast, a little bit sunny, uh, but not too cold, not too warm. Just a good comfortable day. Right now it actually feels really good because I've got a little bit of a breeze hitting me from the back and with my back being a little bit sweaty from the pack, it feels very cool and refreshing. I haven't seen too many animals today. I saw some bucks over on the Idaho side. It looked like a bachelor group of bucks way up on the hill. And then I saw a doe and a fawn this morning, but uh, not too much today. I did hike in here a few days ago and I saw some more deer uh, moving around. And in this valley here, I actually saw some elk, but they were far, far off and uh, hard to see. There was a one single that was kind of out in the middle of the area. I, I didn't see any others with it. I'm sure as far away as it was, something could have been there and just bedded down and I wouldn't have seen it. But I also saw some turkeys, uh, spooked a couple turkeys coming in that day, a couple tom turkeys, so that was fun. Yeah, like I said, all in all, this trip has been pretty good because 
I, you know, I had a variety of animals that I would like to have seen, and I pretty much feel like I've seen most all of them. I really wanted to see a bear, and I would have never have thought that I would have had the opportunity to just sit and watch one uh, from right across the camp, you know, sit in my awning in my chair. I thought I'd have to hike out here and glass hillsides for hours to find one. And I haven't seen one on any of the hillsides, but got to enjoy, got to enjoy that one there that, right across from my camp. There's a lot of wildfires blooming right now, and it is beautiful. And the fact that everything's still fairly green, you can start to see that things are starting to turn and, that, and it's starting to get a brownish tinge to it, but there's still a lot of green in the hills, and there's a lot of, like I said, wildflowers. And they're beautiful. In fact, right up here, there's some that look like these little tulip things. I'm, I don't think they are tulips, or maybe they're part of the tulip family, I don't know, but... There are a variety of colors from white to very purple in color. Really pretty. But like I said, I think this, this is my last day. I think I'm going to pull out of here tomorrow. And uh, we'll go adventure into some other areas. But I don't know. I, I feel like I could just stay in this spot forever. <laughs> Has everything that I, a guy could want, I think. You know, good fishing. Plenty of space to stretch your legs. Pretty special place for sure. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. From up here, the world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free.